Hey guys, Daniel from The Stuff of Legend here. About a year ago, I collaborated with Ryan over at Nerdy Blurb TV. Great channel, best editing on YouTube, you should check him out. Well, I had recorded a video that had some complications with the technical difficulties between the audio and the video and synchronizing. So it was very difficult and I was not able to get the video out. Well, Ryan has helped me out and he has edited the video and put it together in a way that it is watchable. <laughs> so you guys, I hope you get to enjoy this video. Let us know what you think about this collaboration video. I'm sorry that it took so long to come out, but let's talk about whether or not the Star Wars franchise and fandom is dead. Let's have this conversation. I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo, and I have here a special guest for an awesome bro talk, Ryan from Nerdy Blurb TV. How you doing, man? Pretty good, man. Thanks for thanks for having me on been a huge fan of your stuff and just glad to be here dude there's a, a little thing that i want to i want to talk about called star wars and i know that this can be a love-hate relationship here you probably have recognized i love star wars there's a lot of people out there that believe that star wars is dead and that it's dead it had been dying for a short, short while and then they killed it off recently with the Last Jedi, and the boycott of uh, Solo, you know, there's been a lot of negativity, and there's a lot of new content that's still coming out for Star Wars, uh, and some people are, are optimistic, some people are pessimistic, but I wanted to discuss this here with you, and get your thoughts on Star Wars in general. How are you feeling, man? Like, what's, what's your take on Star Wars uh, at the moment? What's your appreciation? So, when we first talked about anything really like star wars was definitely in the mix of just like our thoughts and feelings and for so long i have been putting it off like actually telling you what my feelings were and then of course that's when we decided we need to have this conversation i am not a fan as i used to be of star wars and i'm going to tell you why in three three reasons and they're very simple one is i think the same reason why everybody else is in love with Star Wars, and that's because of the nostalgic factor. Whether that's good or bad, it was a part of my childhood, and I will always love it for that. But it's it's not what it used to be. Now, I'm not one of those people who say that this isn't my Star Wars or anything. Like I'm very much open to the fact that like people want to take their spin on 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 a property. Like I'm totally cool with that. Um, two, the other reason why I love Star Wars is because it's, it's probably, I, I might, I might be wrong, but I know I'm right in my perspective that it's the best world building, if not the first world building that we've ever seen in Hollywood that have taken the real world by storm. Like I say for myself, because that I was super new to that. I was, I was so familiar with Star Wars. I knew all the planets I knew all the video games. I knew I, I knew all the characters, even ones that weren't even even in the movies. And when the prequels mm -hmm. came out, I was super stoked for it. I still love the prequels today, and I'm sure we'll talk about more about that later. But it's it's just a whole mm -hmm. world. It's a, it's literally a galaxy. It's a, it's a universe. It was it was mm -hmm. it wasn't the first that created a cinematic universe, but it was the best. Like. If we talk about old cinematic universes with universals, like monster movies and all of that kind of stuff, that was just kind of like small gimmicks in here and there, which were great and everything in their time, and they still hold up today. But Star Wars was just – everybody lost their mind because it was a possibility that – that it could it could be endless it could be timeless and and that's why star wars is still like a gem for me today and the third reason why i love mm -hmm. star wars not not only because of the the nostal nostalgia not only because of the the world building but above all the original movies are cinematic genius masterpieces and and as a cinema holic myself i absolutely love them are they perfect? Yeah. No, people can argue with me, but they they changed the game for Hollywood, and I respect it so much. Not only that, I I could watch any of those movies now and and still be lost in the moment. I love Star Wars, 
like and and I want to continue loving it, but the whole reason why we're having this conversation is because I'm I'm having a love hate relationship, as you said, with it because of of just how things are going right now. Wow, I, I gotta say, like as far as what you're saying that you love about Star Wars, I, I fully align there. Like I I'm someone that really gets into stories that have a lot of like history and lore. You know, like I've always, even in, even in school, I was very much into history and learning about like what happened before I even existed here on this world. What happened with presidents of the past or ancient Greece or Rome or like, you know, you go back into biblical times, hundreds and thousands of years, you know, like you can talk about all these things, but it, it, it I don't know if it's like, a, I know there's a lot of chicks that are very much into history, but as a dude, there's something about like epic legendary lore, you know, like and, and something to li look up to and live up to and aspire to. And these these tales, though they be fantasy or fiction, um, you know, like you said, Star Wars has one of the greatest, grandest lores of all time. It's not only expanding multiple worlds, it's its own universe, much like the comic book movies or like you mentioned Godzilla, but it's also um, it's different time periods. It goes back back within its own universe forward up to at the time was the original trilogies and then it cuts backward into the prequels and then before that even the legends and novels and stuff speak of ancient times and, and uh you know creatures and beings that were from significantly uh previous generations you know very very low uh eras in the in the universe you know and so like you go back to all the way like to the old republic or even before that times of like uh, Darth Bane or you know who, whoever it might be um, it's just so deep it's so rich and there's so many stories even if you even if you stick into one one area like in the Clone Wars for instance um, it's not just what's happening with the Jedi it's what's happening on all those planets when the you know w with the Republic and the Trade Federation being in this state of you know conflict what's happening there every planet has its own story at the exact exact same time and it's just like our real world you know and like the depth of, of thought that goes into that it's like it's so fascinating I, i'm same as you just video games they dig into that lore and that's not necessarily canon anymore unless they canonize it and they go out of their way to say hey yeah that was true like they did in in part in like solo uh star wars story there was a few nods to video game content um, in, in Rogue One, they mentioned a few things that were teases, not really canonizing the video games, but it, like, for instance, calling it Star Killer Base, referencing the Force Unleashed and the Star Killer storyline, you know, Darth Vader's hidden apprentice, and, you know, like all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Lots of fun. But what I, 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 I think, ask, oh, sorry. I, I think what you said is really, really interesting. Even George Lucas himself had said that Star Wars has always meant to be a fantasy movie it, it 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 shouldn't only be looked at as a sci-fi movie it's a fantasy film meaning there's there's the hero's journey there there's there's so much history and it, it, it's like it's on the same level as lord of the rings when it comes to so much history backstory characters and so on and so forth and i totally get that and that that's a whole other reason why that that's a part of the world building like i had said that is the reason why i love it so much yeah exactly and it's like uh, along the same lines as like the Lord of the Rings, it tickles the fancy of men because we have this like innate biological need to fantasize about like war, you know, being like the, the natural protectors. And this might get into, you know, I, I hope, hope it doesn't trickle into any other aspects of like social politics or whatever. But like, you know, biologically speaking, men are and always have been the protectors of the home. You know, that's why we're made like barbarians, you know, big and strong, broad shoulders, dense bones. Uh, you know, we fantasize about war. Little kids are eating their Pop-Tarts and shaping them like guns and swords and stuff. And they're hitting each other with pool noodles and all that stuff. It's predominantly a masculine thing, but it also it tickles our fancy because then we get to see these battles take place. And imagine what it would be like to be in that world and use the force and have a lightsaber that could cut through anything and like have the ultimate weapon. And um, it's 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 just so much fun, you know. And I think it's it's particularly written in a way that you know anybody can grab onto it, anybody can enjoy it. But I think the reason why more than eighty percent, 
probably accurately 85 to 90 percent of the fan base is male. Um, I can understand why a lot of people are very upset with it right now. <laughs> After like the last Jedi, uh, and you know, like some of the the things that they did in there that were not. Uh, they weren't they weren't friendly to the fan base that have built this empire by putting their money on on this fandom you know like by buying the comics by buying the books and the novels the t-shirts the hats the lunch boxes the backpacks all that stuff um, so I think this kind of leads me into my next question I suppose and this you know I, I hope that you will uh, get don't hold anything back <laughs> what is it about Star Wars now that has uh, put you off, put you off to Star Wars. So that is an interesting question because I feel like nowadays when you ask people this who are very much in the same seat as I am, why do you not like Star Wars anymore? It always comes to what you had mentioned. They're they're putting women in our in in our Star Wars. They're 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 putting uh, gay activists, LGBT stuff in my Star Wars and everything. I am so not yeah. that at all. Like not even close. Like 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 yeah, I I think I think that not everything should be a platform in into what you want to say, but like giving the producers and 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 the creative team like the benefit of the doubt, like if you want to put a message out there, like freaking Star Wars really honestly is the way to do it cuz everyone's going to watch it and everyone did watch it. So like if you want a message put out there, then great. Like they took an opportunity, they seized it, and it wasn't well received. I'm sure they knew that what they were getting into was was gonna cause problems because it's 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 a big opinion. Like when it comes to women, and yeah. I, I'm all about like women in, empowerment and everything, and 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 so on and so forth. I'm not like super radical about it. I think we should all be equal, but. That is not right. my issue with Star Wars. My issue, honestly, is just flat out. I, you know, I'll break it down. It, like the the original yeah. trilogy was, it was just a it was a, a work of art. It was so beautiful. It had it, it changed everything that we had seen in in Hollywood. I mean, I wasn't even alive back then, and and I even I grasped the the like the weight of like how everything changed in Hollywood when those movies came out. They I mean, they brought in a whole new aspect that people had never considered before. And not only that, it has the best, maybe the second best, but like it is very much up there as the best score in the world. It's probably the most recognizable score and and music to date when it comes to movies. Maybe next right. to Lord of the Rings, I don't know, maybe that's my own biased opinion. But like, yeah, there's that. I mean, I would there's, say so. <laughs> I I don't know. That's that's totally up to opinion. If anybody wants to say otherwise in the comments down below, go for it. But I'm gonna stand by that. Um, but I mean, here's a side note. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ever watch Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones has great yeah. music too, but it's freaking the same music. John John Williams used the same music in Star Wars in Indiana Jones. But like, that's that's neither here nor there. But it's iconic music. It's it's a work of art. It's a masterpiece. It's it's history changing. But here we are in – I mean I don't even know how many decades later. Here we are with a new saga, apparently continuing the saga, meaning Luke's story is not over yet. It's, it is everything that it, – it, it tries to be the trilogy so much that it – and not only does it fall short, but it – I'm not holding anything back. It's a freaking disgrace to just cinematography yeah. in general. Now, The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson did a freaking amazing job when it came to cinematography, to music with John Williams, and special effects. I had never seen anything better and like than mm. Last Jedi. That was it was it was a spectacle to behold. But just because my piece of pizza has a piece of dog crap on it doesn't mean I'm going to eat it and say it's good because the story was yeah. absolutely crap. Not because I'm a huge Star Wars fanatic and saying, like, you changed the whole lore and everything. I was totally fine with that when they did that in the prequels because it's a it's a freaking movie. Like, it's not real life. I, I can separate the two. But 
nothing in the writing made sense to me. Like for someone who watches movies in, in general and, and, and loves just reading stories, I was so lost. I didn't, I didn't understand any of the motivations that any of the characters had. I had no clue. There, there's, you, we talk about backstory and history and everything. They completely skipped over that in The Force Awakens. When I first watched Force Awakens, it was an absolute, like, I don't even want to say disappointment because I, I don't go into movies with expectations. It was, yeah. it was just not a movie. It was everything that Star Wars is now is not what the mm. trilogy was. It's completely the opposite because all it is now is a cash grab in my eyes. Everyone knows, uh, like you, sla you slap a Star Wars logo on it, anybody's gonna go see it. It's the the sheer arrogance of everything makes me infuriating. Now, am I gonna boycott a movie? No, I'm just gonna select movies that I say I don't have time for that anymore. I'm a father and I ha work a full time job and I run a YouTube channel. Not to mention, I have a beautiful wife who is super understanding about all of those things, and I don't know why she's still with me because I'm so freaking busy, but like she is like, she's amazing. And so I want to spend time with her instead of wasting yeah. time on something that I already know that I don't like, and I don't want to force myself into. Yeah. I hear you, man. So that's, you know, that was, that was quite a few things I think right there, but that's, you know, I understand almost every single thing you just said for the most part, I agree, but let me, let me, let me go back through this really quick. And I, I'll share my thoughts on these things that you shared. My notes here while you were speaking on what you were saying right. is a little bit uh, rudimentary because I'm trying to type fast and listen. So um, let me <laughs> see if my boiling it down is justified. Uh, so in the in the why Ryan hates Star Wars, <laughs> we have uh, the social agenda, feminism, LGBTQ pushing on this platform. And I totally 100% agree with you. And to recap, basically the thoughts there is that, um, you know, like as a, as a filmmaker, as a business, you can do whatever you want, right? But it is also, it's kind of, it feels like a slap in the face when you, you know, the, the original trilogy gives you this gigantic universe and it's, it's known as the story a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's not supposed to be representative of the problems or issues that we're discussing in our day-to-day -day lives. It's supposed to be stuff that is relevant to humanity on a very like general and simple basis, but it's also far away. It's supposed to be fantasy. It's not supposed to be modern politics, you know what I mean? And it's not supposed to be modern social movements. And this is what they, they've started to do. I believe that they they really you know they they were edging into it in the in the Force Awakens, but it was in the Last Jedi when they decided to go, um, you know, full full on 100%. You guys are gonna get a fat taste of what we believe, and this is right, and you you should probably agree with us, otherwise you're probably just like Hux and Kylo, total space Nazis, and um, you know we want nothing to do with you. So like it's it's weird because. I know what you're saying with the, when you said that they're throwing, you know, women into Star Wars. But on on the flip side of that coin, and I, I'm here with you. I know what you meant to say here, or at least I think I know what you meant to say, is that they're pushing feminism, which is man hating feminism, not equality. They're pushing equity. They're pushing to make it so that there is as many or more women in Star Wars now as there was or ever has been men in the past. And they're, you know, they're they're throwing it at us, despite the fact that, you know, the the fantasy story that we've all grown to know and love, the fan base that built it into the empire it is has predominantly been 80 to 85, maybe 90 percent of the fan base, and and we're the ones that that geek out and obsess over these fictional things that, you know, we we put. I have a whole wall of Star Wars over over this way. You can't see it. It's off camera. I've got tons of stuff over here. I've spent a lot of money over the years. Like I know you probably have as well on the DVDs and tickets to the movies and you know like stuff like that. It's um it's a lot for them to just turn on them and like stuff like quotes from Kathleen Kennedy, the president of Lucasfilm, uh, saying that I don't owe the male fan base anything. 
that's that hurts. You know what I mean? That hurts my feelings personally. I'm not I'm not trying to be a you know like a, a sissy dude here, but it's a direct it's directly aimed at people like myself who have been a, a male fan of Star Wars for a very long time, and we were the ones predominantly um, hyped and excited for the you know the Force Awakens. I did I did enjoy the Force Awakens, but you're right that it didn't have really anything in the in the realm of story you know original story or development it started out just with you know like awesome sequences of like x-wings which by the way i loved and then uh you know like all kinds of like great i would say great cgi shots of you know like the, the ships and uh you know like the creatures and stuff it was pretty cool how they did like the the bb-8 robot i'm not a huge bb-8 guy i don't i don't even think i have a single figure of him uh at all in my collection but they built that robot to actually roll and balance the head on top. Like they actually built it so they could have the physical thing there and not have to use CGI. Like they went out of their way to do a lot of this stuff. But, and I'm not saying that production quality equals a great film. Right. Now, and I, I totally get what you're saying. I do want to clarify something though. The politics in Star Wars does not bother me. Like, do I agree with those, like those views? Absolutely not. I, I, I don't, I don't. Like what? Whatever views that they're going for, or at least whatever views have been put out into the public when it comes to uh, women are not equal to men, and we should make them. I don't believe that. I I I've, I've always believed that. I've always tried to live my life like trying to be like have everyone equal to me or anyone else. So I I don't disagree right. with any any of that. I I don't have a problem with it. It's just the fact that like. It was. I thought it was a poor move to make on on such a valuable property, and a lot of people are really upset that the PR for Star Wars has been really bad. Where it's like fans can suck it. Essentially, I don't even have a problem with that either. Like I I don't have a problem with Kathleen Kennedy like saying we owe you nothing or or men suck or J J Abrams saying that you hate women. Like I don't have a problem with that. Do I? Like, do I not like that? No, I, I don't. But, like, that doesn't change the fact that I can still enjoy a movie. The The only reason why I don't like Star Wars, or at least where Star, Star Wars is going, is that it's not a good story. It's, it's just not. Like, nothing has been put into play. Like, if you want to talk about a good movie, like – we we can we can bash on the prequels and how like f ridiculous they they are compared to now but like back then and you and I have talked about this back then they were yeah. i mean they set like cg like if it wasn't for them we wouldn't have cgi and it was it was beta it like it was very much beta back then and and George Lucas went with it and people yeah. can complain about it all they want but it was it was marking history and people can argue about the last jedi and say that we're finally putting women where they should be in Star Wars, and that makes history too. I'm not saying that it shouldn't. I'm just saying that it was a poor – it clearly was a poor choice because of the reaction that it got. What I'm saying yeah. is that clear – like huge plot holes, huge like absolute like I irrefutable, like blatant, like we don't really care about this character kind of stuff. Is just like thrown out of the window, and I have no problem with how they did Luke Skywalker. I'm I'm not I I am nobody. I can't tell anybody who what Luke Skywalker should or should not do. I'm talking about the fact that they didn't take time to make us want to like these characters, and they they completely as soon as soon as the opening like the opening crawl for Force Awakens rolled up, that was where it lost me, like from from uh. frame one. Where it says that the the first order has taken over, I was like, "Who the freak is the first order?" Like, wouldn't this have been so much better to see how like in balance the galaxy was after what Luke, Leia, and Han had already done, and then slowly see like like infiltrations come in and change that? Now I know that's very similar to what the prequels are, but wouldn't that have been a a better story to like let us learn about who these bad guys really are instead of like oh we're we're like no nobody knows who we are but we're way more powerful than the empire has ever been and that from like scene one was like 
this sucks already. Like call that my expectations yeah. or not, but like that's where it lost me. Is like you, if you're not going to take time on on who I should and should not like, and then they wiped out the entire res, like rebellion, and we're back to where we started, to where it's just like the resistance, and it's just like. I've seen this movie all over. It's like A New Hope all over again. And then The Last Jedi was literally the same exact outline of The the Emperor Strikes Back. And now here we are with this last movie, and it looks like we're, we're going to be repeating the same things all over again in Return of the Jedi from, from what has been leaked already. So it's like, have we yeah. not, like, do we not have any originality whatsoever, Hollywood? It, that's that's what kills me is that, like, a, Hollywood has been so tainted by just like, like, cash, money, to where it's like let's just yeah. keep on doing sequels, reboots, and all of that, and let's not like anybody will go and see if that has the brand behind it. But like that's not the case. Like we apps we we actually care about this galaxy. We care about this universe, and you didn't take care of it because you didn't. You just your eyes were way too bigger than your stomachs were. That's literally how I felt about it. Yeah, and I I will say that um I think that the uh did did you. Really quick, did you get a chance to see like Rogue One or Solo? I saw Rogue One, and I enjoyed Rogue One because I've always wanted to to learn the. Even though like it's a little bit off because they say in A New Hope that the Botham spies got got this, and I played I played computer games where I had to be the Botham spies to get that. So I was like, that's a little bit different. But I've yeah. always been interested in that, so I I liked that. But when Solo came out. It wasn't that I boycotted it. It was it was literally like I don't have time. Usually I make time for movies that I want to see, but I yeah. I didn't care enough to see that movie, so I didn't see it. I still haven't seen yeah. it. I would like to see it one of these days, but it just yeah. it just so, hasn't come up. But the uh, with Solo, I will say that um, all these spinoffs that they've been making, like Rogue One and Solo, uh, they have been. Pretty original. Solo had a whole lot more nostalgia tips to it. Um, they tried to like push the dice thing that was in the Force Awakens, where there's the dice hanging from the little thing, like a, you know, you'd see a, a a Cholo hang from his his you know Mustang or whatever. But like they had they had those little like, nostalgia things from here and there. But a lot of it was really good. A lot of it was really cool, and it was a heist film, an original style heist film that was pretty decent. I really enjoyed that. I thought Ron Howard did a great job remaking that after lord miller dropped the ball and um but i think that that was actually a lot better than most people who who were not going to see it when they did go see it they're like hey actually that wasn't that bad that was pretty decent and uh it's not as good as rogue one i'll say but i do like it a lot and i think that you might appreciate it a whole lot more than the sequel trilogy and i think that that's going to be very critical moving forward for disney is be careful about what you do in that time frame because you've already messed up a lot of the expectations in the fan fandom. The story, like you said, basically sucks. For um, the Last Jedi, The Force Awakens was a giant mystery box. They asked a million questions with no answers, and um, some of that was, you know, that's J.J. Abrams' style, I guess. But he literally just took that and applied it to everything in the context of like a copy paste of of a new hope and um uh, i think uh, i i probably do have a lot more problems with the the politics inside of the last jedi and i think contrary to you i absolutely hate what they did luke skywalker in uh in the last jedi but you know again i think we both we both are probably on the same page as far as the force awakens in the last jedi basically the sequel trilogies but i agree with, with you that the more interesting story lies in what happened to make the 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 first order rise? You don't just jump to the to the the they're in power. What's happening? Why is the universe imbalanced? What's going on here? And where is the universe after the fall of the empire before um, the the rise of uh, the first order? So in that in that same thought, I wanted to bring up uh, two things. One was um, the uh, Star Wars Resistance which is the new animated TV series. You said you had some thoughts about that. This one does take place in the time frame of the, the sequel trilogy, but it's a little bit before. It's like a precursor to talk about how the Resistance kind of came to be 
and the adventures they went on before, um, like Ray, Finn, Poe, all of them were really, really like in the heat on the the first, the first, uh, I'm sorry, the Force Awakens. So that TV show, and then also the John Favreau live action TV series, which takes place six to seven years after Return of the Jedi. So this is going to base that show is rumored to be about the Mandalorian War. Um, not the old Mandalorian War, but the civil war that takes place on Mandalore after the Empire falls. Um, and some of the evidence for this is that on Jon Favreau's um, Instagram, he posted, enjoying a day at the ranch with Dave Filoni. And uh, he's, you know, it's Dave Filoni's house. He was obviously there to consult. Dave has been consulting for, for them ever since The Last Jedi really botched everything that was happening there and fans lost all hope and they built a big hatred for the sequel trilogy, most people. And um, I think uh, these stories, I have confidence that they're, they're trying to avoid what cost them millions of dollars by the fans hating The Last Jedi so much that Solo bombed. You know, there's other factors there. There's them having to double the budget for Solo, which caused you know, a lot more problems, but then also, um, you know, like there was the boycott, people not liking Kathleen Kennedy, Disney's reign over Star Wars, all that stuff. But Dave Filoni is the creative genius that was there alongside George Lucas. He was like his Padawan. They call him the Grand Master. And he created the Clone Wars and Rebels. These are animated series that are wonderful if you haven't gotten a chance to see them. It's literally the bomb. Like if you haven't seen it, there's, there's none of the garbage from the sequel trilogy. It's all just untainted, awesome storytelling um, of Star Wars, constant lightsaber battles, blaster fire, um, force using like you have never seen in any of the movies. It's so amazing, and it uses most all of your favorite characters and a lot of characters that you wish you got to see, like some of the bounty hunters other than just Boba Fett. You get to see a lot of the Jedi from the temple actually go on missions and stuff, get to know the clones as individual like people. It's really cool. Um, but he's the guy, Dave Filoni's the guy that created like all of that alongside George Lucas. And now he's consulting for these two shows. I think they're doing this to, as a reparation. And I have hope for these two shows because he was the creator of that, of the Star Wars Resistance, which, yeah, it takes place in the sequel trilogy, but it's Dave Filoni's creation. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on that before you, before you go. So I've what, got, what I've got about on, maybe on fifteen more minutes. Like we're we we should be good. I do have a question though. When you say the resistance, is this yeah. a new one that's coming out, or are you talking about re rebels, the rebellion? Uh, resistance. Resistance is the new one that kind of looks like an anime. It's it's about okay. X-wing pilots that are that are in the resistance force. Okay. Um, I just had to double check because I know that there's way. another show. If if correct me if I'm wrong, that's called Rebels or. Rebellion or, or, or something? Yes. Okay. I, I wasn't Rebels sure which one we were sequel. talking about. Yeah, Star Wars Rebels is a sequel to The Clone Wars, also made by Dave Filoni. And that one, even though it's not as popular as The Clone Wars, it is a direct sequel series taking place 10 to 20 years after uh, Revenge of the Sith. Right, right, right. And it leads into, like, kind of Rogue One era and then uh, A New Hope. Right. Okay. So... Uh, you wanted to know what my thoughts were on on the new show Resistance, right? I think we had texted prior, and you said that you had some thoughts on that. Yeah. So, um, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's my whole thing. Um, and I've said this before. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a full time. Uh, and self-employed, full-time uh, human being <laughs> when it comes to work and just anything. Like, right nowadays, if it don't have Marvel on it, I ain't going to watch it. So there's one. Yep. And two, with all of the yes. other TV shows that, that Star Wars had come out with, it was, it was too kiddish for me. Clone Wars, the movie... And then the TV show so, yeah. that it, the TV show broke off from it, it it just it didn't. I saw yeah. it and I said, "That is not for me." Like, I I'm I'm not necessarily a fan of the animation. I'm I'm sure it's got fun stories, but when it comes to like how I love Star Wars, I don't think it's there. So I didn't see it. 
and all of that. So, yeah. like, and I believe you when I believe anybody who says like, oh, well, there's your problem. You haven't seen Clone Wars. You haven't done all of this. You haven't you haven't read all of these comic books or you haven't played these video games. Therein lies my other, like, not the biggest issue, but an issue still the same. As whereas like when I walked out of Force Awakens, I was like, I just didn't like the movie. And and they're like, oh well, have you seen this and have you read that? And I'm like, well, no. Like, I don't need my I don't want my movies to be a huge time investment for me. I want to go to a movie. I want to watch and take part in that story, and then I want to go home and think about it. You know, and and like and talk about it. There is one yeah, thing yeah. that I absolutely loved about Force Awakens, and that was like the the origin of Snoke, the the questions about Ray's parents. It just it it lit like it literally consumed me. My wife was like, "You need to stop." Like I would be up, and I'm kid you not, I would be up until two in the morning, two thirty in the morning, newlywed by the way, texting friends and be like, "What the freak is going on?" Like she's not of Luke, she's not of you know. It's just like it, and that yeah. right there is what a gr great movie should be. But the problem is, is that Force Awakens fell short because. In the end, like I would ask these questions, I'd be, I, I kind of just don't care. I kept asking those questions because I wanted to, like I wanted to love Star Wars the way that I, I had loved it before, and and that was all I was holding on to. And so I said to myself, if they answer questions in the in the Last Jedi where they talk about the origin of, of Snoke, and yeah. I didn't really care too much about her parents too much, like I cared way more about how the first order became extremely powerful. If they answer all of that, then then this would be great. Like I will definitely like be invested in it and everything. And they absolutely they did the opposite. Like they they could have cared less. In fact, they like the resistance was even more weak than than before. And it was just like I just oh. don't understand the writing style. I don't even understand what's been been going on in the writers' minds. So, full circle when it comes to the resistance TV show, I'm wore out. Like I like even yeah. if, even if I were to watch the Clone Wars, like it, it still is not going to answer any of my questions for me to to want to invest my time when it comes to all of this is starting to sound like I have no hope for Star Wars. I'm sure there is, <laughs> but like like yeah. I've never like fully like out like out in, instead of like in front of a camera for like one of my nerd rants like i've never like fully voiced this before but like it's just yeah. it's just like the the neglection of of just like good writing instead of like yeah. i mean they started selling porgs before before the movie even came out for last jedi and i was just yeah. like that like that right there more than anything else back in 2012 when i was a missionary uh, for my church, and I heard that Disney had bought out Star Wars, I thought, there goes the Star Wars universe. Because Disney, as much as I love them, they're a huge cash grab. And I get where they're going with Resistance, this new TV show, to bring in more of the, the next generation into Star Wars, to making it fun and everything. I'm not a fan of its animation, at least not yet, because I do like right. anime. But like, it feels way too Disney Channel for me. It feels just like, it feels like Zach and Cody, it's the sweet life, whatever that's called. It just felt way more yeah. like that. Like, oh no, like we're in trouble and then we're not. And I don't know. It's just, it feels way too pre teeny for me. And like, if, if you need to clear things up with the lore that, that you screwed up with, with, with this, if this is the answer, then I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of it. So and and I mean, there's a lot of speculation with Dave Filoni saying that I'm not a part of that project. He definitely is a part of that project because his name's on it. But like, the thing is, is that I don't want to be a part of that project because it's just it's not my style. Yeah, I can hear that. And there's you know that's part of being like uh, some of the great you know film pundits and and you know like I'm sure you're aware of John Campia. I, I listen to him from time to time and I love I love a lot of what he says. I disagree with him sometimes, but he, one thing that he says all the time is that, you know, that's, that's part of being a film fan is that you get to like and not like things based on you, based on your preferences and, and your appreciation of the art. And that's what it is at the end of the day is it's art. But, um, I, I do think that like with, uh, 
you're right with like being a movie fan is a whole nother beast than being a TV fan because it's a commitment. It's a time commitment. And, uh, it's an investment, you know, and it's it something that ends. especially it never ends. And then, yeah, exactly. And then with us being like married with kids and such, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's very tough to find that time to, uh, to invest. And sometimes if it's, if it's like mediocre or it's really not your style, it's not worth the investment. It's better to just be with your family. You know what I mean? Or, an, um, yeah, or work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you make your hours. And then, uh, yeah. So I will say that if, you know, if that's not your style, then that's, that's totally fine. But like, if like with the, uh, I will say that if you, I have had fi- friends that said exactly what you said with it, not being your style, it's too kiddish and stuff. And if you grind through that first season, I think you will find that it is, it is much more than it appears to be. You don't have to, obviously. Right. No, but... I've, I've been known to eat my words when it comes to this because Avatar The Last Airbender, I had the same feelings, and now it's like the greatest show I've ever seen in my entire life. So, Same, dude. It is literally – Avatar The Last Airbender, I still tell everybody, is the best animated show of all time. It is. It yeah. literally is. Almost nothing can compare, but I will tell you the second best animated TV series I've ever seen in my life is The Clone Wars. After season one. After season After one. After season one. Okay. Yeah. But, like, if you watch the season one, it sets up a lot of cool stuff for the rest of it. So, and that's the, that's the commitment there is, like, if you can't afford the commitment and you're like, or you're bored one night, you know, maybe jump to, like, episode 12 or something just to save yourself a little trouble. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But it's it's cool, and then uh, yeah. So I don't know. That I think is is probably uh, I'm totally content with with that conversation. But if you liked Rogue One, uh, I think you probably will at least enjoy Solo a little bit. Probably it's hard to tell because I mean it didn't it didn't feel anything like the sequel trilogy. It felt nothing like that. The only thing that was like that was one droid that enters in the second act. But it's not a big deal because uh, they end up killing off that droid in the second act anyway. So it's like it's this like social justice warrior droid that's like preaching to the crowd, and then they end up killing the droid anyway. So it's like not a big deal. Uh, right. It was yeah. almost satisfying. At this watching. point, it's not a spoiler. I totally knew that like within the first week, and I know that there's a part of me that will like that movie because there's because of how much backlash they got from like the last jedi they had to give a fan service film it wasn't the 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 movie that they've all been asking for but it was definitely one that delivered when it came to its fan service that's what i'm looking forward to more than anything else i think maybe i'll do that but like it just it didn't grab me at the time like there was there was other things that i wanted to see in the theater and everything but when i heard that there was fan service i thought that's at least the right step that you need to go as as a business when it comes to the Star Wars brand because of how much they seem to have screwed up with their fans. So a fan service film is great, but it wasn't necessarily what everybody was was asking or wanting. But like I remember yeah. I remember when I was a missionary in Georgia and they were doing the casting call for it there in Peachtree City. I was thinking that would be cool. I would totally see that. And it, it came down to it where it was just like, I'm not so hyped on this movie. So I'm going to watch that yeah. movie one of these days. I'll let you know for sure. And I'm glad Good. that there is fan service in there because if there wasn't, I don't think I would have seen it at all. Yeah. And there's, uh, it's it, the way that they, they shoot in that one, Ron, the way that Ron Howard reshot the entire film. There's a couple of scenes where they, they kept the original content but it, uh, almost the entire thing, I think I think it was something in the range of like 80 mm. percent of the film was completely reshot by by Ron yeah. Howard, and uh, you can you can tell it's really it's really amazing some of the shots that they're, that are in there, just the way that they show the Millennium Falcon from the inside and like even the outside, it just it looks really good, um, and then there's also a really cool story there. Um, the actor that played Han Solo. Um, I feel bad for the guy being that he has such a legend to live up to. Yeah. Um, but he actually did a pretty good job. I actually, I, while I was watching the movie, I actually wasn't thinking about Harrison Ford during the movie, which I was totally like worried about, you know, like, 
Um, and the guy who played Lando, I actually genuinely loved. I loved, uh, you know, his performance. Donald Glover playing him. Really right. fun. Um, I think uh, if they keep going, and this is a question I think we can end on a couple of questions for you, uh, just so that, you know, my fans can start to engage with this. Um, number one, uh, if you could have one Star Wars film of your choice for either a single character or a single period of the of the the lore or maybe like based on one of the video games you used to play uh, what what would come to mind what would you request from disney if you could ask for one film like we're we're i'm my mind is so wired because of the brainwashing hollywood has done are you talking about remakes or are you talking about what storyline any so if you wanted a remake you could ask for that what i what i'm i suppose what i'm getting at is like there's a lot of films that out there that that are rumored, the Obi Wan standalone, a Boba Fett standalone, but there's also people who are clamoring on for, and I'm one of these, for the Old Republic storyline to be told. And it's not just one story, right? It's a, it's an entire time era, kind of like how the Clone Wars era, like the prequel trilogy, is its own era. There's a million and twenty stories you could tell in that Old Republic timeline when there's literally thousands of Sith and thousands of Jedi constantly at war with each other lightsabers everywhere different kinds of sith different kinds of jedi force specific or lightsaber heavy or you know like whatever it is um there's tons of stories within star wars to tell is there one that comes to mind you would request if if it was up to you yeah um okay so like i already know mine but like when when you ask the question a lot of different things jumped in my mind so i'm going to answer a couple with a couple things there was I think it was a PC game, but we also had it on yeah. the N64, but Shadows Empire or Shadows of the Empire. Uh Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. We loved that game. That was like our bread and butter. We loved that one. We also played Pod Racing, but like that was a cool one because it was it was just a dude. I remember thinking I think it was that game more than any other game where it was just like and I was young. I I was thinking Star Wars could like do a to- like an awesome movie on this guy alone. Don't remember the guy's name. I just know that he was good friends with Luke and like really yeah. admired Han and and he was he was like their their black ops guy. Like he would go in and and secure places and and like that was like your your levels and missions and everything. You go in and like the the re- the the rebellion needs this place secured. Like go in there and and so on and so forth. That was cool to me. Like I, 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 I remember thinking that movie more than – or that video game more than anything else. I remember thinking Star Wars could do so many cool things if they just like took the time or had the money. And, and of course they had the money. But like I remember thinking that would be a really cool one um, as well as – honestly, Rogue One was the, was the movie that I've always wanted. And I got it, and yeah. and I and I wouldn't say that I absolutely loved it, but I I definitely love that it's here, and and I do like that one, but like, if there was any other one, hands down, and I'm, dude, like, I'm just gonna say this, and I know I'm gonna get hate, but like, I'm a Star Trek fan, so like, yeah. I am not I am not a st- <laughs> fanboy like you are when it comes to Star Wars, but I do know this thing, I haven't played any of the video games or any of it, but like Knights of the Republic dude like why have they yep. not made this movie already like it, it it's uh, it's not something that i'm asking for it's something that i'm i'm questioning why they haven't even done already and yeah, honestly dude, when yeah, when dude. i heard that john favreau was doing a live action tv show that's when i thought finally we're going to get this and it it's not and like i don't know what to think of that because i literally know nothing when it comes to john favreau's live action tv show because I'm not invested in it anymore. But like when it comes to like just a movie, if you're asking me, I think they could do a whole other saga with Knights yeah. of the Republic. And that's actually one of the things that I wanted to mention was that it's um I think it's the guys from um uh what's it called? Uh shoot. Game of Thrones. I think it's the guys that directed Game of Thrones. And they wrote Game of Thrones, uh, the 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 show, not not the books. Right. But the um, they're they're doing a trilogy, a Star Wars trilogy, and we don't know what, what that storyline is so far. Mm-hmm. And 
we believe most fans believe that they're going back to the old Republic. And, um, you know, John Favreau, we don't know for a fact, but the, the, the rumor and the evidence points to it taking place because it takes place six years after return of the Jedi. We believe that it's, it's the, the Mandalorian civil war after the fall of the empire. So, um, and they they actually have talked about Disney's planning to make several other TV shows. It's very, very possible we will get some sort of saga or series in the Old Republic timeline um, because that's literally what every fan is asking for, yeah. that and the Obi-Wan film. Yeah, Obi-Wan, I, I mean, I just don't – I like – as much as I love Obi-Wan, every time I think of that movie, I, I the, my first initial thought would be like, yeah, I definitely want to see that. But like – I don't know what they do with that. It's it would just be him like playing solitaire by himself in the desert. I feel like you know, but like when it comes to when I heard that they were gonna do a Boba Fett movie, this was forever ago. This is back in two thousand thirteen when I heard this. Yeah, uh, that's the benefit of living yeah. in Atlanta because freaking everything is filmed in Atlanta. But like mm. forever ago when they when they were doing casting calls for for the Boba Fett movie, I remember thinking that's cool. But, like, they would have to do it right. Like, we need to figure out why – sorry, it was supposed to be a Jango Fett movie. That's that's what they had said. Ah. Yeah, sorry. I totally screwed okay. that up. They uh, When I was in Atlanta, they were doing casting calls for a Jango Fett movie. Like, it was going to be merged into a Boba Fett movie as well from what I had gathered. I mean, granted, I was a missionary, and I didn't have a lot of time to, like, dive into yeah. all that kind of stuff. But when it comes when it comes to, like – what people had relayed and, and like in what news um, was going around, it was supposed to be a Django Fett movie. And I thought that would be cool to see how he got into not only as a bounty hunter, but how he got into yeah. being cloned in general, because like, that's like a huge, like how the freak did this like Polynesian dude just like get cloned, you know? Like, I so yeah, I, yeah. I think that would be cool too. To, and like, I feel like, I feel like another thing that Star Wars has done very poorly is just, like, announce so many movies when they're just not going to be accepted at this point in time. And when the Boba yeah. Fett movie was announced, everybody lost their mind because that was something they didn't consider of. And and I remember thinking, that could be cool, but I want to know Jango Fett's story too. So there there's right. another one right there. A Jango Fett movie I think would be really cool. If they were to bring that back as well as yeah. like mix it into maybe like make it like a flashback kind of kind of thing. Like it's Boba Fett's story, yeah. but every now and then we're we're seeing Jango his dad uh like all of all of his story too like interspersed. I think that'd be way yeah. cool. It would be so cool. You know there's a, there actually was a video game called Bounty Hunter and you can you can YouTube um Star Wars Bounty Hunter cutscenes all or whatever and it actually it goes through because that game is all about Django Fett and how he got to the point where Count Dooku approaches him about being the prime clone for this grand army or whatever and his condition is you know like I, I won't spoil too much of it but it's fun you can YouTube that but I agree to tell that story in a cinematic way would be amazing especially for those of us who are uh, you know prequel fans or fans of just the lore in general that would be a really good story because it's character driven, you know, and it like you could you could get really into that. I don't care so much if you want to do like the sequel trilogy and talk about like this new empire, basically, and the new rebel rebellion or whatever. And it's not, you know, it's the first order in resistance and it's blah, blah, blah. That's boring. But then you have characters that are awesome that people like that are kind of shrouded in a little bit of mystery. It would be nice to be able to get to appreciate them further. And um, I think that, you know, the Han Solo movie, when you see it, I can't wait to hear your thoughts. But for me, um, it, you know, it's div it was divisive a little bit amongst some fans. A lot of original trilogy purists uh, did not appreciate it because uh, they it, it was it's new and they don't want anything other than Harrison Ford, which I, I get. But it was Harrison Ford's call to be killed off because he didn't want to play the character anymore. Right. So it's like. You, you do what you can what, with what you have, you know right, what I mean? Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, so you, I think that that's a very good observation. That'd be a lot of fun. YouTube, uh, that that trail of cutscenes or whatever it is, Star Wars bounty hunter cutscenes. Yeah, I think and, I will because uh, that sounds way cool. Dude, it's so sick. And if you have, if you still have a GameCube or whatever, um, you can <laughs> you can get the game fairly cheap. 
on Amazon. Oh, cool. And uh, it's a fun play. It's really fun. But um, yeah, so then uh, I think uh, I don't feel like we really got a chance to uh, be swayed one way or another. But that wasn't the point of the conversation. The point of the conversation is to just merely talk, connect, understand one another. I feel like that was more than accomplished. Um, I think yeah. we agree on a whole lot. Yeah, for sure. Because I w- I'll, I'll say this as my final, like, what I hate about Star Wars right now is that, like, it's completely divided right now. And I don't want to, f- I don't yeah. want to be, I don't want to be on the part of, I don't want to, I don't want to be on the side of, I hate Star Wars while you're on the I love Star Wars side. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what it should be. It should just be like, here's some things that I do like, and here's some things that I just don't like. So, But my thought process is different than I think a lot of other people is that I'm only going to take part in the things that I do like and just not really invest my time in the other stuff that I'm not liking right now. And, like, whether this was to be swayed or not, like, I thought it was a cool, great conversation because I – I've literally just gotten fights with people that, and and I don't have time for that. I I, I just don't like. I want to say my opinions. Yeah. I want I want to I want to say why I don't like things. But like, it's been it's been very much, it's been very much a battle between Star Trek and Star Wars because I always seem to bring up <laughs> Star Trek, and I just I, today I thought I'm not gonna mention it, and and I already did, so. I lost that. But, like, the thing is is that it's just really hard to find somebody to actually talk to about this. So I appreciate you bringing me on here. And whether maybe this could be an ongoing – like, I'd totally be down to be on your show again. But, like, maybe this could be an ongoing series. Like, like you're joining us on the third episode of, like, let's get Ryan to love Star Wars, you know? <laughs> but, like – Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, it's, it's almost – it's – I don't know. Like, at this point – because I really want to go and see the last – episode and i want to enjoy it but i'm just not like i'm just like dude captain marvel's yep. coming out like that's that's all my thought process is like captain marvel yeah. freaking avengers dude like i'm way more and, and it's like it's almost as if star wars has inadvertently given the baton to, to marvel and i'm fine with that but i want to right. i want to take part into what i used to love right of course like we don't want to let our our, our childhood uh, fantasies die you know what I mean and like it's it's like a part of us that we grew up with and uh, just to be able to continue to enjoy that together I mean I here's one thing that I was thinking about it's like if we ever do get to see each other in person it would be awesome to just go back and watch our favorite like Star Wars movies together because we don't necessarily have to take part in the new stuff to continue to appreciate the old stuff you know what I mean mm-hmm. and it's like it's it's also there that art that we grew up loving and adoring, uh, John Williams' masterful s- film scores are still in those movies. We can still listen to the soundtracks. They're still there. The games are still there. There's still some really good content that is being made. I do. I have 100% faith as, as a Clone Wars fan. The Clone Wars final season, season seven, is coming out, even though it's a half season technically, but it's the conclusion. Um, I'm so excited for that personally. And uh, to... to pick on something that you said earlier you're more than welcome to mention star trek in a star wars conversation i have no problem with that i'm not i'm not opposed to that i think that you know i like i haven't gotten too much experience with star trek like i mentioned you over the phone previously is that i basically just got to see a few episodes out of the original series which i liked i thought that was awesome and then also the uh the movies with chris pine um and uh zachary quinto whatever his name is uh, that was really good. I really enjoyed that. You might feel differently, but it's, you know, I really enjoyed it. And uh, it was, I was like, hey, you know what? Maybe I should give this Star Trek a, a shot. And then I looked it up and I realized it was like 660 hours of watch time to catch up on Star Trek. Yeah, I might so. be considered as a hypocrite because I say that I don't have time to watch Clone Wars when I've watched the original series and, 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 and new generation series of Star Trek like multiple times. But like, I mean, I mean, you indulge in things that you love and like any of you who yeah. who are watching this, um, like I'm going to plug my channel here. I have yes, I have please. a few videos. I have a few videos that are incorporating uh, why I love Star Wars and why I love Star Trek and why I think one is better than the other. You can you can be the judge of which one you think I love better. But uh, yeah. but also like I want to ask your fans this, too. We do like a versus trial. 
and one of ours, and I want to hear your opinion, is uh, okay. who would win in a fight, Captain Kirk or Han Solo? Ooh. You have to stay tuned and watch watch our ah. show for that. Honestly, like, would love to come on your show again. You have great content. I hope your fans know that. I'm sure they do. Stuff of Legend is exactly what it says in the title. Dude, thanks so much for letting me come on to the show, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ryan. And I'm totally down. We'll definitely do this again. Um, we should even consider making it a mini series <laughs> or okay. a mega series. Who cares? I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm way cool with that. Excellent. Well, everyone, go check out Ryan's channel. It's fantastic. He has one of the best um, uh, production qualities of any YouTuber I've seen. Uh, it's so good. I love it. I, I fantasize about one day being that savage. Most of my content is live. Uh, <laughs> and I don't have like any anything fancy like green screens or you know even a decent desk to operate out of. But it's awesome. I love you, man. This is great. Uh, everyone, check him out. And then thank you guys. Make sure to drop a like, uh, leave a comment. Make sure to engage with us on these topics and discussions. We can't wait to hear from you. You guys know I do super replies, so I make sure to make videos about the content that you drop into the comment section if it keeps me up at night thinking. And so uh, <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear from you guys. Um, share, love it, and I, I'm so grateful to have you guys subscribing to the channel. Consider that if you haven't, and I can't wait to hear from you guys again. You guys are the best. Ryan, you rock. Everyone, stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Awesome, dude. Um, so I totally <laughs> want to do this again. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.